What's up good people? Thanks for tuning in to 4722 Dominique looking lovely on a budget. Today I'm doing these chicken thighs inspired by Auntie Fifi with her seasonings that she uh, usually uses. No, I don't have her personal seasonings but I do know that they are uh, $10 a packet. I do plan on ordering them. Now like I always say, now she, she be saying some things. Her language is a little explicit but she is hilarious and she can throw down in the kitchen. So shots out to you Auntie Fee. I love your videos. But anyway, I'm going to be using black pepper, seasoning salt, and of course y'all know how she roll with paprika if you watch her videos. She always say use it. It's for the coloring, um, onion powder, garlic salt, and I use accent. I know a lot of people be saying no, don't use it for whatever reason, but it does bring out excuse me, the flavor in your food. So first I'm going to be taking this black pepper. I'm shooting this video by myself because the kids are not home from school yet so if it's a little shaky I'm sorry but anyway you're gonna take your pepper and just go over your chicken like that all right now I'm gonna take the seasoning salt Trying to take the top off with one hand. Lord Jesus. I hit a bliss, so I might be saved. Okay. All right. You want to make sure everything, you know, no white spots in the chicken is covered up. Then I'm going to use the, uh, well, let's do paprika last. The onion powder, of course. And I like to saturate my chicken with onion powder. And I know y'all seen me prepare chicken thighs before, but um, I'm going to do this gravy that Auntie Fee um, does. I'm inspired by that. Well, she does it with the pork chop gravy, but I'm doing it with the chicken thigh gravy. This is uh, garlic salt. Okay. And finally, the accent. Now, last but not least, the paprika for the color. Alright, and you're going to flip them over and do like so. Alright, hang on. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. I'm going to season the other side. And then the next thing you may see is me uh, starting up the gravy. So, hang on to the next clip. Okay, y'all, I've seasoned the other side. I couldn't, I had to come back. Y'all know how I do. But anyway, now that this other side is seasoned, I'm just going to take it and just mesh it all together and get all the glues out the corners of the pan, all the seasoning rather out the corners of the pan. Make sure that, you know, it's like putting on lotion. You got to get all in the crevices and stuff. Make sure every piece of the chicken, every morsel of the piece of chicken, you got seasoning on it so you can taste it. Believe me, the people who are going to be eating it appreciate it if they like chicken like that. Alright, so now that that's taken care of, I am going to get the gravy started, the pan, the grease, the boiling water, all that good stuff. So y'all stay tuned and I'll be right back. All right, now I'm just taking, um, I just put under a half a pot of water because I don't need all that gravy, not just for us. And I'm taking, like she said, I'm taking the onion and cutting up um, a little over half an onion into this gravy. Just cut it up. It don't have to be no specific way. You just want to um, come in the middle of the pot. There you go. You don't have to um, have it in a special way. Just make sure you cut up an onion, a half an onion, a whole onion. If your family loves onions, but it's just basically to give it the seasoning and, and the uh, flavor, the onion rather. Alright, um, as you can see, I'm almost done cutting up this little piece of onion. I got a little piece right here to go, and I'm about done doing that. But she also used um, parsley. I don't know what the heck it do, but I'm doing exactly what she did on her video. Let me just take the cap off that. And I'm putting the parsley flakes in there with the um, for that chicken. And I'm going to come back on here 
after I brown the chicken and transfer the chicken into this water and I'm going to make the roux like she did with the pork chops at the end. Of, and once again, y'all, she uh, did the pork chops. I'm just doing chicken thighs today. I'm not cooking pork chops. So that's, you know, whatever, whatever. Y'all get it. But anyway, I'm going to come back on here and just do exactly what she did. I'm telling y'all, Auntie, if you have a chain, I'm going to put a little bit more parsley flakes in here. Okay, and that should take care of that. And I'll be back doing the roux and transferring the chicken. So stay tuned to the next clip. Alright guys, as you can see, I've already put these uh, chicken thighs in. And that paprika is giving it a bomb.com color. Um, I'm not going to cook these all the way through. The only thing you have to do is basically just brown them. They're going to cook over here in this roux. As you can see, the onions is already boiling. And I'm just going to transfer... In a little while, um, these thighs, after I drain them over into this, but they got to cook on each side for, I'd say, no more than between three to five minutes because you don't want to cook them all the way through. Back here, I just got a little bit of fat back on, starting to boil. Yeah, this is my, my grandma gave me this pot, y'all, so I trip about my pot, but I love it. It's just old school. It got some other kind of seasonings in the dog on steel, metal, whatever you want to call it, I think, because it just do something to them greens. But I'm just going to put some mixed greens, some collard greens on the back eye. I'm not doing fresh collards, of course. Not today. I don't do that during the week. It's just going to be the canned collards. But it give it that old school flavor. But anyway, um, as you can see, this chicken thigh, see it's already browned on one side. So that's all you want to do is just brown it. And it's okay if you get some grease, you know, on your stove or whatever. Just wipe it up. I'm trying to stay neat for the video purposes um, without splashing everywhere. But anyway, you're just going to flip it over and let it brown just a little bit on the other side. And then you're going to just transfer them in a little bit from this pot to that pot. And then I'm going to come back and let you guys see how Auntie Fee said to make the roux to go into this to thicken it up. Now, y'all know how I feel about my chicken broth. Chicken broth gives stuff a better flavor. Chicken base does too. But she said use plain water and onions. So I'm going to follow directions because I want this to turn out how she uh, said that it tastes. And she, she said a lot of things what it's going to taste like. I just can't repeat that. But I won't repeat that. <laughs> But it's a trip. Y'all go over and check out Auntie Fee's pork chop um, video. Pork chop and roux, I think it is. I'm not sure. It might be pork chop and gravy. But check that video out so y'all can see what she says. So anyway, I'll be back to let you guys see how I make the roux and transfer these um, pieces over here into that pot. Give me just a few seconds. So stay tuned to the next clip. All right, y'all. Now we're just going to transfer. See, it's brown on that opposite side as well. You're just going to let some of the grease drip off, but not all of it because it's going to give it this, um, this water back here some flavor. Okay, and now we're going to do the next piece. And you're just going to keep doing the same thing. And remember, this chicken is not quite done all the way through, but this water is going to continue to um, cook it. You don't want to make it all the way done in the grease. Now what I'm going to do after I transfer this chicken, you see all those little bits and pieces? We're going to make a roux out of this. I'm going to pour some of the grease off, of course, into that bowl over there. Sorry, y'all, if y'all hear my baby. She's home from daycare now, so she's making a lot of noise in the background. Mom. Yeah, boo bear. Okay, so now we got that transfer into that pot. Mom. And I'm going to put the lid on it for a few minutes and I'm going to take this grease. Wait a minute, babe. And I'm just going to pour off just a little bit of grease. Ooh. Into the bowl. Okay, baby. Well, I might need a little bit more. Yeah, just a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to take, I have my flour in this Walmart bag. Okay, hang on guys, stay right there. 
So what you gonna do while that grease is hot? You gonna take? Hang on, let me get my water too. You gonna need to have a cup of water handy so that you can pour the water into that flour mix too. So that's what's gonna make make that root. So I had my flour in this Walmart bag, like I said. And you're just gonna take the flour. And see it's already starting to bubble up. The more flour, the thicker your gravy will be. So it's up to you how you want to do this. And you just want to take it. And the longer you have it on, the darker it's going to get. This is what's going to make the gravy in that pot back there. Okay, and I'm going to need a little bit more flour. I may need a lot more flour. I should have just poured all of it into this uh, pan, but I didn't want to put too much. We'll see. Let me put one more teaspoon. So that's maybe about six big spoons of flour that I just used. Thank you. Yeah, boo. Thank you. Okay. This is going to create the roux. See how it's thickening up? And I cut the eye off. So, because the hot pan will continue to cook this. All right. So I'm going to let that see and get a little bit darker and a little bit thicker. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like before I transfer it into the pot. Alright, stay tuned to the next clip, guys. Um, as you can see, it's thickening up pretty good and it has gotten a little darker. And of course, I had to add um, water to it, you know, as I added the flour. But it's thickened up really, really good. So now, what you're going to do is take some of this, this root. I want to put the clunky clunky pieces in there. And you're just going to add it to that back eye just like that. That's what she did. And that's what's going to start thickening everything up. Uh oh, set this down. She said bump cans. I was cracking up when she was talking about, you know how you can use the cream of mushroom soup or the, uh, um, Cream of onion soup or whatever soup, Lipton onion soup. Just said bump the cans. Just use the roux for your gravy. That's what's gonna make that gravy. So I'm gonna put another big teaspoon in back, a big stir serving spoon of it back there, and that's gonna do it. And it's gonna start to thicken up. And I'll come back with the final results. Y'all hear that fat back popping in that grease? I mean that uh, pot back there. So I'm just going to let this cook down and thicken up some. And I'll come back and let you guys see the gravy with the final results. Alright, stay tuned to the next clip, guys. Another quick tip, guys. For those of you that like your gravy a little darker than what you saw in my pot, you can use the browning and seasoning sauce, the kitchen bouquet. And you can find that at any grocery store, your local um, food market, or any place like that that sells um, different spices and sauces. I poured maybe like a cap full in mine to darken it even more. So if you want to use the kitchen bouquet, you can't go wrong. It just darkens the color of your gravy, but it doesn't change the seasoning. So I just want to give you a quick nugget. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to 472 Dominique. Looking lovely on the bucket. All right, guys. This is how the gravy has turned out. This gravy looks awesome. As you can see, um, that's the onion. Everything has cooked down. I'm going to let it cook maybe about... 10 more minutes just to cook down a little bit more but if I wanted to eat it now I could what I'm gonna do now is put on me a good pot of rice good fluffy pot of white rice and we can have this today tomorrow and the next day for leftovers um, because it made a lot of gravy I didn't think it was gonna make that much gravy but it did so if you don't want that much gravy or don't need it just continue to let it cook down or you can pour a little bit off and um of course, I told y'all I was going to do the fat back in the little greens, just a small pot. And what I did with the leftover uh, chicken thighs, I'm just frying those because some of my family don't like the um, stewed chicken into the gravy. They just want fried um, 
thighs, and I use thighs because they hold a good seasoning to it. If you like fat on your chicken, um, that's good for the gravy, and if they're cheap, they're real inexpensive. You can use chicken legs. I probably would use chicken legs the next time, but I had thighs on hand. I didn't have any legs, so that's why it's no specific reason. You can use whatever part of the chicken you want to use. So I'm just going to let these cool down, well, finish frying down. So they'll some they'll have what they need or well, whatever they want fried thighs and whatever else to go with them and the greens and um, that's pretty much it as far as with the, the gravy it turned out really good I can't wait to taste it I've already tasted a little bit of it and it is off the chain y'all um, so Auntie shots out to you this is excellent if you want to try this for your family tonight I suggest you do so you won't go wrong. I'm just going to turn it down to like medium low and let it cook down maybe like I said about 15 more about 15 more minutes and that's going to do it. Again, thanks for tuning in to 472 Dominique looking lovely on a budget.